Men are the prize of podcast. Harvey here, your host. How are you? Hope the week is good. Hope everything is going well. Another great guest this week and a way for me to introduce him as I was thinking about life. And I grew up in school and I hated math. My dad was an accountant. So of course I didn't like what he did. I didn't like science either because it never clicked with me. I was more history and stuff like that. And there was nobody really there to kind of push me in that direction. Nobody acknowledged it or said, you know what? You might be good at this stuff. So I veered towards the other things. And now, you know, I've got a bunch of kids and STEM's a big thing. And I feel now we have people who are saying, hey, you might be interested in this. I have three daughters. Maybe you like science. Maybe you like this stuff. I'm on TikTok way too much. And I was blessed and lucky to find this gentleman who is my guest this week. I'm only going to say your name once, and then the rest of the time, I will go by the title. And let's see if I'm right. So I've got Maynard Okariki. Am I close? Uh, close. Okarike. Mm-hmm. Okarike. I feel like there's a football player who's got a similar last name. It might be why I said it that way. Yep. Otherwise, mm-hmm. well, thank you. You are better known as Hip Hop MD. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? I'm well. Thank you so much for coming. I saw your content, it pops up, and I'm like, this looks so much fun. If I was a kid and this came up, I would look into this stuff. I would check in chemistry and biology and all this kind of stuff because you make it fun. So I really wanted to talk to you, especially as a Black man here. That got me most excited. Black male educators are the, my favorite people in the world. So yes. nice. awesome. I love it. I love it. I appreciate you reaching out. That's awesome. Oh. Oh, I appreciate you answering, man. I didn't know. I mean, you big time. I'm like, I don't know if he's going to have time for me, but we got lucky. And on that note, I love a good bio. Allow me to read this. Maynard, I'm going to leave it at that. Better known as the hip hop MD, graduated from the University of Washington with a degree in civil engineering. He is an award-winning science communicator, having received both the Asteroid Award for Best Streaming Content and the People of Change Award for his community outreach efforts. His passion for science and entertainment, along with his curiosity for a new innovation, has taken him through an incredible life journey. Noticing a lack of minority involvement in the STEM fields, he created Hip Hop Science with the goal of encouraging minorities and youth to pursue more advanced career paths. His background in engineering, acting, music, business, and incredible work in STEM make him uniquely qualified to engage on a wide variety of topics from an entertaining perspective. This is highly reflected in his speaking engagements and daily social media posts, which provide both humorous and informative SciComm content. What's it like hearing your bio and hearing all of your accomplishments? What's that like? <laughs> I I mean it's it's cool, uh, but you know I'm I'm not I'm not the type that sits on accomplishments. You know, like I every everything I do is 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 all for is I look at it as things that I would be doing normally, right? These are things that bring me uh, fun and excitement in life, and. Uh, and I'm sure we'll get to it, but I, you know, I, I'm, I'm a curiosity seeker and I'm a life lover. So uh, I always chase new things and I always kind of chase new passions and I always try everything. I try everything at least once. And so, uh, when I, yeah, whenever I hear my bio, it's just kind of reflection of everything I try to bring to the table. And I'm like, yeah, I've been through some pretty unique things in life. And, uh, and I appreciate that. That's awesome. And I predominantly men are my guests on this podcast and I read a bio because we don't always get to hear our accomplishments. We don't get to kind of revel in it, kind of sit. And you know what? I did that. I won that award. I've helped these people. I went to school. I have these letters after my name. So I always feel it's always good. Every once in a while for somebody, in this case, to virtually hand you some flowers and say, good work. And as a father of four kids, three daughters, when I see a black male educator, it really does something for me because I, I don't know, I think I, is it three, is it 4% of teachers are black males? We're, we're barely there. Yep. Yep. Very and small. So, and it's so important that we need to be seen. So, and you don't do it in a classroom, but you do it in a much larger scale. So many mm-hmm. people are seeing you and it's wonderful. So yeah. let's get to it. How'd this yeah, happen? Absolutely. Yeah. How'd you get into it? Yeah. So yeah, it's a, uh... That's a whole uh, that's a whole podcast in itself, uh, getting <laughs> getting to this point. Um, but you know, for me, I was always big into science. Science was always a big passion of mine uh, from when I was a kid. I used to 
go out exploring and I was a nature lover. I was just a nature nerd. So catching frogs, snakes, salmon, like that was my thing. I used to love being outside. Uh, but along with that, I was always into entertainment. You know, I always loved being the center of attention. Uh, music was always a big passion of mine. I was into hip hop from a very early age uh, and worked as an artist and wrote and a song wrote. Uh, I used to be a battle MC. So for all my, you know, battle like, MC lovers out there, that was kind of my introduction into the music lane. And, uh, you know, love Wu-Tang and Biggie and Eminem. And like, that was that was my wheelhouse. Uh, but it was weird because I always had these contrasting passions, right? On one side, I'm this science nerd. And then I'm this hip hop head, you know, and these kind of two seemingly distant uh, fields. And I grew my, I grew up just kind of being that, right? Uh, knowing myself, what I cared about, but not really understanding how to truly express it in a way that made sense. You know, people would look at me, and you know, they would see, the, you know, especially as a black man, right? Then, and, and you know, how I was dressed and all these different things. They'd be like, oh, that's you. Do not look like a science person, you know. Uh, and growing up, I was always kind of in that mix, and even when I was working professionally. You know, I had to kind of hide my kind of entertainment side and that passion. And then when I was in the other lane, I had to kind of hide my knowledge side, right? And try to, you know, come off as not as educated as I was. And so I, I grew up kind of being in these contrasting lanes for so long. And, uh, you know, I graduated, got my degree in civil and environmental engineering. Uh, and I was doing a lot of music work on the side. I was, I was, I was doing shows, I was performing, I was writing for artists. And uh, started getting into acting and uh, commercial work as well, too. And some opportunities opened up for me in L.A. And I thought to myself, you know, I had made this push to go full career mode. Right. I grew up with African parents. Right. So West African parents it was like going to be a doctor, lawyer, engineer. That was those are the options for me. You know, and I went down that route. I got my education, got a great job. I was working professionally in the field, doing some amazing engineering projects but I'd never really chased the things that I was passionate about on the side full time. And so when some opportunities opened up for me, I was like, this is my time to make a leap of faith and see what happens. And so I resigned from my position and moved down to LA to pursue some entertainment opportunities. Uh, and from there, things just kind of opened up, right? I started digging into my creativity, you know, and I and really started getting more immersed into my creative juices. Uh, parts of me that I hadn't touched for a long time because I was so kind of education focused. Uh, and then within that, the whole hip hop science platform kind of came about really as a, as a kind of comedy sketch idea. I started doing these, you know, fun character sketches that were true to who I was, right? But from an external perspective, it seemed funny, right? You're like, I was playing this hip hop MD character, which is basically this science nerd that's into music and pop culture and fashion and entertainment. And it was funny. And I was breaking down science in random, inappropriate situations. And it just slowly snowballed into this whole education platform that it is now. And uh, and I think re things really took off when I became purposeful with it, right? I'd always been into mentoring and giving back and always noticed a lack of diversity and just general interest in people that look like us into the STEM fields. And I started realizing that people were really learning from the content that I was putting out there. And I was like, this is a great way to engage. And this is how I would have loved to have science taught to me when I was in the classroom. And so I just kind of ran with that. And uh, things kind of just accumulated, had some videos go viral, had some people reach out to me. And, uh, and then one thing led after another. And here I am now doing all sorts of education content uh obviously on social media but i get a chance to do keynote presentations and work with some amazing organizations and go on expeditions across the globe and uh it, these are the things i love doing already and now i get to fuse all of my passions together in one and it's been definitely an eye-opening and, and life-changing experience for me that is amazing i gotta say all that stuff that you've done that's quite a resume that's quite a life already and you're mm -hmm. obviously a young man. You've got so much more to do. But with mm -hmm. all those accolades, the thing that came out that jumped out to me most is when you got to go to WrestleMania. I'm a, I'm a <laughs> wrestling head. So I was <laughs> like, oh, dude, you in the crowd. I was like, that's serious. I do that. <laughs> so we might, I might throw a question at you at the end. But yeah. obviously everything you've done is amazing. And again, it's wonderful to see somebody do something educational and, you know, and fun, interesting what did kind of kick with me is I'm a little bit older than you. What I grew up and being, I guess, nerd, blurb, since we're Black men, mm -hmm. 
we don't sound the way we are supposed to sound. And what you mentioned with how you would have to handle two different worlds, the educational world, the entertainment world, we Black people know about code switching. Yep. And you were talking about that. So you're trying to entertain, but I can't be too smart because I won't fit that. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I'm going to be, I'm going to teach you, but I can't be too funny. And it's yeah. kind of sad that you can't just be you. You have to be, you have to fit a kind of mold. So mm -hmm. it's, I mean, you did what you had to, but how'd that feel as you were going about? You had to kind of switch things up, change things as you were going along. Yeah. And, and you're right. It's like, we, we kind of innately learn how to code switch, right? It's not something that's taught to us we just instinctively do it and I was in that process right I was just the world that I knew you know and and for me I think there was a lot of cultural elements that affected that as well so you know I was raised in West Africa I was raised in Cameroon when I was younger um, and being first generation here in the states that added added value and then coming back from Cameroon and coming to the northwest and Vancouver Washington a predominantly white <laughs> you know a, a school in predominantly white area uh, I, I had to do a lot to just fit in naturally. And so, yeah, so getting into these different circles, you just kind of naturally learn how to code switch. And so I'd be in that position, especially when I started working professionally, you know, I'd be in meetings and everything. And, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta put on that specific voice. You gotta put on that kind of character and that image. And then when you're outside of that world, you let loose and everything like that. Um, but for me, I think that aided in, making that transition out of engineering into entertainment a little bit easier because you kind of grow up with that pressure a lot, right? Where you have to try to fit in. And I got to a point where I was so tired of fitting in. I felt I was so tired of being in a mold and being confined. And I'm the type to, you know, I try to do everything. I love exploring. I love seeing different things and having different experiences. And I felt kind of pigeonholed being in engineering in a bit because of the expectations that I had to live up to and because of the criteria and that box that I was confined in. And I'm the type, I live life without any boxes, right? I will think outside the box in any lane, I think anything is possible. And it's just a matter of trying it and seeing what happens. Uh, and I felt really confined. And so for me, I think that aided in making that shift going to entertainment a lot easier um, because now that was a way for me to be able to be creative and start to really be my true authentic self and be unapologetic in a lot of ways. And I think that ex definitely opened the doors for what I could do now as far as my STEM outreach work, because now I had these multiple different perspectives I was able to bring to the table. And now seeing youth, especially that are in similar situations that I was in, adults even, and other peers that are going through the same thing as well too. Now I'm able to bring my expertise and my experiences to the table to share how I transitioned, how I molded myself into, you know, different entrepreneurial paths uh, just by finding a way to be able to express my true self. And I think all of that is definitely assisted in me being able to do the work that I do now. That's amazing. And I'm so glad that you're a part of it, that you're there. I know you inspire so many people. So but let's get into some questions here. So prize, if you listen or watch this podcast, you know prize is one of my favorite words. I take four of the letters. Each of those letters represent a particular characteristic that I think are good for men. We're going to switch it a little bit. I'm going to kind of tailor it to what you do in terms of the entertainment and the education and everything. And you can answer however you see fit. But the first letter in the word prize is P. The word is purpose reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. And to a degree, you've answered the question already, but I'll ask you, what is your purpose with what you do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I think that's a great word. Uh, that's something that I incorporate a lot in my life. I want a quote that I live by. So when you find your passion, it becomes your purpose and you can no longer be passive. And so I try to be purposeful in everything that I do. Um, when I started the this you know, hip hop science platform, the purpose wasn't fully evident at the time. Like I said, it kind of started out the sketch idea, and then you know I didn't know exactly where it was gonna go, uh, which is kind of the the thing you gotta love about life is you never know how things are gonna transition and what doors are gonna open up for you. Uh, but once I once things started to click and I started seeing the pieces come together. Um, I knew the only way that I can really be able to elevate it and take it to another direction was to be purposeful about my mission and why I was doing it. And once I really started piecing everything together and kind of looking at my history as far as my experience in STEM, my background growing up in STEM, 
um, a passion for curiosity, all these different elements. I knew what I was passionate about. So now I was like, okay, how do I shape this to be purposeful? What is this going to accomplish? And what is this going to do for people that are watching this content that I'm now creating? And I tapped into, okay, why is this unique to me? And it was unique to me because one, being a black man talking about science, that's not something you see, right? And I grew up loving Bill Nye, you know, Neil deGrasse Tyson, right? You know, these famous you know, sci scientists, um, but there are only those handful, right? And the majority of the scientists you see on TV would look like Bill Nye, right? It would be an older white guy. You didn't really see people that look like me talking about science. And so- my purpose, you know, when I started really uh, elevating my content with the hip hop science platform was to encourage more minority and youth involvement into the STEM fields. I I didn't, I, in my friend circle, there weren't a lot of people that were really cared about science or talked about science. And I'd be at the home watching Discovery Channel and Animal Planet and talking about all sorts of random animal facts and things happening in nature and climate change and all these different things, all these topics that I cared about, but I didn't see others that looked like me talking about it. Uh, and I definitely didn't see youth talking about it. I'd see, you know, kids that, that, that I'd be around or, uh, or other peers I'd be around their focus would be on, hey, I'm trying to be this actor. I'm trying to be this celebrity. I'm trying to be uh, uh, this athlete, right? And these were the people that were celebrated. And I was like, that would be dope to have scientists and just kind of nerds in general that were like me celebrated like these athletes were. And I was like, what could that impact be if our youth now aimed to be those type of people rather than aiming to be the next LeBron or be the next Kobe, right? Or, you know, that, and nothing to say that, oh, you know, trying to aim for athletic pursuits is wrong, right? I, I'm, I'm, I was an athlete as well too. Love sports as well, uh, but you had to know that it, I wanted to be able to showcase that there were other lanes, other directions that you can pursue, and other things that were having a greater impact on the world as well too that we could be involved in. And so that really became my purpose was just encouraging more minority and youth involvement into the STEM fields. And I think once I really honed into that, everything around what I was doing became a lot easier um, and it became a lot more driven now. And I was, I became much more motivated in general because now I knew specifically who I was helping. I knew what this mission was going to achieve. Uh, and then I started seeing things gravitate around it. And so I'm always big on finding a purpose and diving, diving deep into that to really open the doors for whatever you're working on. That's wonderful. It's wonderful. I love hearing what I got from what you're saying and I can kind of connect it to men in general. A lot of men, we kind of walk around and not even just black men, but men in general, we kind of walk around this earth holding in a lot of the stuff that's going on, a lot of anxiety, struggle, all this stuff. And a lot of us kind of think that we're alone in it, that there aren't a lot of men kind of going through the same struggle, who who doesn't don't have manic episodes, who isn't depressed, who doesn't have all these things happening so we don't talk about it because we yeah. don't see anybody else going through the same thing. So I hear you talk. And you're like, I like science. I like, you know, Shark Week. I love that. Nobody else cared. All these kind of things that I like, but I didn't see anybody else. You were mm -hmm. very much, your vision is very much something that men in general need. Somebody to shine a light so that we can all see that this interest is not singular. It's not just me. Yeah. I'm not, a just because I'm black, I'm, we're not a monolith. I'm not, I don't, we don't all love basketball. We don't mm -hmm. all love MJ, you know, and LeBron and whatever you're very much you're an important part of this culture because you're opening up opening up the eyes of everyone so yeah. you educate in more than one way more than the obvious so again as and i can say this as a parent seeing a black man do what you do as a parent seeing a teacher do what you do you're doing wonderful work so i applaud you and thank you for talking about that thank you oh no mm -hmm. problem um the next letter in the word prize is r the word is resilience the capacity to recover quickly from difficulties and toughness. Mm -hmm. So through this journey from just Maynard to now the character, to now the man who's going around the world, meeting famous people, doing all these things, you kind of talked about it, but is there, was there a moment where you're like, you know what? I don't know about this. I don't know if I can do this professionally or the way to make money. Was, mm -hmm. Did you have any moments where I'm like, this may not be the time? Will be oh, complete for me. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. This this whole journey has been a giant setback, you know. Uh <laughs> wow. <laughs> it, it, it 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 really has been. And and, and I th I think that's one area I like I love to kind of share now because 
nobody nobody that really has i don't i, I firmly believe that nobody that has uh amazing success in any pursuit that they're doing did it without any like dramatic setbacks or difficulties or obstacles that they had to overcome uh because you know especially going into this lane and doing anything as an entrepreneur anytime you set out to work on your own and grow something from scratch on your own, you're taking a risk, right? The, the, the safe path is to, you know, get something guaranteed, especially like me, I was, I was working as an engineer. I was making great money. You know, I, 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 I two years in two years after graduating, I bought a condo, I had a car, I had a motorcycle. I was like, the, I was living kind of the white picket fence, American dream life. You know, the, the whole only next step was, uh, you know, get married and have kids, right? That was, I was on that path. So anybody from outside looking at me would be like, your life is perfect. You have everything you want, right? But I wasn't satisfied internally. You know, I was still kind of battling those constraints of feeling confined, not being truly happy with what I was doing on a day-to-day -day basis. And so for me, breaking away was that first step in, okay, how do I now carve and shape my own journey? And I think part of that was, you know, growing up with West African parents too, you, you're you kind of shaped into this lane of like, this is what you're going to become. And I felt I was almost in a way lead, leading somebody else's life and not necessarily mine uh, from a number of factors. And one, you, you know, talked a little bit about education and the importance of education. One kind of really game-changing thing with me that happened was uh, engineering wasn't my original pursuit in college. I actually wanted to study wildlife biology. Um, cause I told you, I grew up as a nature nerd, exploring outside and exploring wildlife. That was what I love to do. So I got to school and I was like, I'm going to do wildlife science. And I had peers and I had educators as well that all deterred me. They're like, this is, you're, you're not going to get, uh, make any money doing wildlife science. Uh, there's no money in that. You need to go to where the money's at. You need to do computer science. You need to do engineering. You need to go into medical fields. That's where the money's at. That's where you're going to be able to find success. And, you know, coming into college, it, it stuck with me. I had, I had a full ride going to college. And so uh, I was definitely fortunate and I was and I benefited from having that flexibility. Um, but, you know, you go to college, and you want to walk away with a degree that's going to open up the doors for you for the future. And I want to be able to help support my family eventually and be able to give back to my family, especially overseas. Um, and so I went down the engineering path because I was thinking, OK, this is going to be the safe path. I still get to stay in the in the science world. But even that deviation uh, was, the, but even that was a deviation from what I intended on doing. And kind of now looking full circle, a lot of my content that I do on my social medias is wildlife biology related because that innately was always something that I was passionate about. Uh, so that was obviously one uh, obstacle along the way. But by the time I broke away and I started doing this hip hop science platform, uh, my main goal was, was okay, I want to develop this so I can be able to have an image of representation that looks like me uh, on, a main, on a major platform, right? And so my thought was, okay, if I could bring this content to TV, right, be that Black Bill Nye type of figure, this would be something that could resonate on a more massive scale. And so one of my goals early on when I started the platform was develop my own show. And so everything kind of that I've been doing around this platform has been built to eventually be able to have my own show. And even within that, there's been so many different deviations. I've been in different development deals, been on the verge of breaking out and having you know a show and doing a whole launch party and then being shelved and not going anywhere and then having my content kind of taken from me because I had you know crazy contracts and stuff signed. All these different hurdles and different circles, and then you know, doing entertainment work out here in LA, having to you know juggle multiple different side jobs and all sorts of different things to make ends meet, and not know how I was going to pay rent in the next week, and all these different things, right? That kind of shaped and molded me throughout this journey. There's this level of resiliency that you have to have, and I think with the I think intention with resiliency also comes. Uh, self-belief and determination because those are the things that are going to get you through and help you be resilient you have to be determined and you have to have belief in yourself that i can accomplish this and so that was always my big thing i always believed in myself I always thought okay no matter what happens i'll always find a way to land on my feet regardless of how deep in a hole i get i'll be able to find a way to be able to climb out 
And so that kind of mantra, that self-belief is definitely what kept me in and kept me engaged and gave me the resiliency I needed to overcome. Uh, but getting to this point has never been easy. You know, I've, I've, I've always had that mission and that purpose in mind, but I didn't know if anybody else saw it or anybody else felt it along the way. And so I had to have belief that there was a bigger plan involved and that this could really be able to develop into something big that could be life changing. And even now is like the platform has obviously grown and I'm, I've been blessed to have the chance to do some amazing things, work with some amazing companies, speak to different audiences and have a lot of support from really major platforms. Uh, I'm still in the process of trying to develop a show and I still kind of reach those hurdles where, you know, you, you're dealing with, uh, you know, upper heads that are in, you know, the gatekeepers. They're like, I don't know if we're ready to have a black host. We're not really like, there's still those kind of mindsets in place that create a lot of those obstacles that I'm still, you know, working to overcome and and uh, and and develop uh, ways to be able to to manage through that. Uh, so I think a along the journey, all those different obstacles and all those different things help you to really understand you more of yourself and give you more of the purpose along the way. And so I kind of I've, I've gotten to a point now where I embrace all those obstacles. I embrace all those challenges. I look at them as now moments to be able to work harder, moments to now be able to see, okay, how do we combat this? How do we now develop a tool around this to be able to be greater? And all those have given me the strength to be able to do the work that I do now. So I, I look at all the obstacles as as as, as purposeful and uh, mandatory in order to be able to grow. That's really, you should, if anybody should have a show, you really still hearing that 2023, we're not sure. Yeah. that's that's so crazy it's i feel it's like it's the 80s and the 90s and like listen i know you're denzel washington and you're huge but i don't know we ready to see a black a black man as a star of a movie i don't know we ready for that it's mm. it's so sad how we just sit back and we just held back but you know what maybe it's for the best you know mm. i i will be happy to watch you on tv but if <laughs> you get to do it online whether it's tiktok or instagram or some outlet where you can where you can stream you mm -hmm. how as long as you're out there eventually you can't be stopped because eventually these people just have no choice to do it so exactly. you know so they're ignorant and that's their problem for now but we appreciate the fact that you <laughs> keep going you mm -hmm. have to keep going we need you yeah. i'm gonna skip the i the next letter in the word prize is z the word is zeal one of my favorite words mm -hmm. zeal is defined as enthusiastic devotion I use that word specifically for men in this podcast because we aren't been particularly raised to take care of ourselves. A lot of men were raised to provide safety, mm -hmm. clothing, mm -hmm. whatever, a house, a car, gaming system, phone, whatever for whoever we take care of. And on that list will be our family, but we rarely are on our own lists. We don't take care of ourselves. Yeah. So when I ask somebody what they're enthusiastically devoted to, my question is this, aside from work, aside from family, maybe a significant other, all friends and whatever, what do you do when life is kicking you in the butt, your shoulders are heavy from what you're carrying, sometimes you don't feel like it's worth it, it's annoying, life can just be hard, what do you do for you to self suit Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's a great question. You're right. We don't do a lot for ourselves. And, and uh, I think I think my wife now is definitely it, it, it showcasing that for me with like, you know, self care and all these different things right, to be able to take care of yourself. Um, but for me, uh, I think really, it, it, and it kind of comes down to my adventure side as well, too. I my, my one thing that I do whenever when I have down moments, and whenever I need to breathe, Whenever I need to kind of feel like I need some space, I need to get away. I I I go out in nature. I do I I hike. Uh, I go exploring. I do all sorts of different outdoor activities. Uh, you know, everything from snowboarding to you know, I got scuba certified uh, last year. Uh, so I scuba dive as well too. Uh, these are being immersed in nature. And I'm a beach lover is one of the reasons why I love being in LA because I can have access to a beach that I can actually go to uh, and, and, and enjoy, you know, majority of the year. Uh, those are the things that I do for myself as far as being able to find balance and stay rooted uh, in a lot of different things that I do because it gives me some moments of clarity. It gives me moments to relax, gives me moments to kind of break away from the, you know, the, 
trials and tribulations and the day-to-day uh, activities, especially when you live in a busy, busy city like LA, there's always activity happening. There's always something going on. Uh, there's always something to be that's going to take away your time. And I think during the pandemic, ironically for me, and I know obviously the pandemic shaped a lot of people differently, uh, you know, obviously with people dealing with you know, uh, health issues or losing loved ones and all sorts of different things, losing jobs, whatnot. It was devastating for a lot of people. Um, and I definitely acknowledge that. But for me, I felt the pandemic was actually a very uplifting time for me because uh, I'm such an extrovert that I'm always out and about. I'm on the go, I'm on the go, I'm doing things. And you kind of get caught up in that lifestyle. And especially here in LA, when I was trying to balance you know, trying to take things off with the science platform. And then I'm doing auditions and I'm doing these different side gigs and I'm working. I was just spread thin and I didn't even realize how thinly I was spread. And it really took the pandemic of me now being forced to sit still and kind of sit in my own thoughts and just kind of sit and digest that I realized how how thinly stretched I was and that I wasn't being able to, that I didn't have the capacity to really fully dive into the things that I loved doing. And during the pandemic, I really was able to hone into that. I was able to see, okay, this is what I'm doing with the science platform. Let me be able to now dial in into, into the purpose of why I started this and without having other distractions, without having other responsibilities that are deviating me from uh, other activities. And I utilized that the, 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 the multiple years that we were stuck in this pandemic and especially that uh, immediate stretch where we were stuck in our homes and couldn't go anywhere. I really soaked all of that in and I had moments to myself, had moments of clarity, had moments where I was able to step outside and be by myself and zone out and not have all sorts of different uh, requirements on me. And that was really, really uh, life changing for me. And so I, I really now seek those moments where I can be able to find space. I can be able to go to a voiceless area and just kind of be in my own thoughts. Uh, and for me, and I think for a lot of people, because I did, I did have conversations with uh, people that had similar experiences where it was really good for them to be able to sit and be able to focus and not be pulled in so many directions. Um, and I think we, you know, a lot of times, especially at, uh, as Black men, I think too, we, we, we put a lot of weight on our shoulders, on ourselves, uh, like you mentioned earlier, to have these responsibilities and to, you know, be, you know, it could be, it could be in your household, being the, the breadwinner, it could be with your families, being that strong, supportive voice, whatever it is, we put a lot of burden on ourselves uh, that shouldn't be forced on us or that shouldn't be the expectation. And a lot of times once that's lifted, you know, we realize the true power that we have and the, you know, and the capabilities that we have and uh the ways, different ways that we can function. And I think for me, that was a really great moment to be able to now have that weight lifted off of me to be able to now see what my true impact could be. That's good. I think you're lucky in that what you love, what relaxes you is still kind of in, in, in line with what you do. Yeah. So it's never really work for you. It's mm -hmm. kind of, it's your passion. It's your day. It's mm -hmm. your raison d'etre, that type of thing. And that's yeah. cool when it's not that much of a stretch to go mm -hmm. take a walk and go look at like the animals or smell the flowers or appreciate the weather. And you know, mm -hmm. that, that, that's great. That's, that's yeah. really cool. And I, I think, yeah. It. And I think we, and and, and, I'll, and I'm a big advocate for that. Right. I, I think, I think we should all be in spaces where the things that we do professionally or for work should be things that we love doing. I, the life is too short in a way to be able to, to be mm -hmm. stuck especially if you're working a nine to five job and you have, and you're taking away and you're commuting and you on the, to be able to be stuck doing something that you hate sucking so much time out of your day-to-day -day life, because you're losing time on family. You're losing time on opportunity, losing time on things you can see you have this whole amazing world that we have to us to be able to explore. Uh, and you know, that to, for me, that's been the most liberating part of being an entrepreneur and being able to do the work that I do is I don't look at it as work. I'm, I'm able to do all these things. And these are things I would be doing anyway, to be able to find peace and tranquility. Now to be able to now be able to work professionally off of this stuff. It's it, to me, there's no better experience. And so I think we should all try to find ways that we should be that we can incorporate our day to day activities and things that we love into our professional life as well. I think that could be very, very emotionally and physically ch uh, changing for us. Oh, it's yeah. Relaxing mm -hmm. release. Just I agree with you entirely. It's it's a good thing. It's a, an important thing because we don't do that enough. We spend so much time 
trying to take care of everything else except taking care of ourselves. So I agree with you entirely. Mm -hmm. The last letter in the word prize is E, the word is expectation. Mm -hmm. A strong belief that something will happen or be the case in the future. Where will you be with what you do in five years? Mm -hmm. I'll be on TV with my own show. That's what's up. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes yes i yeah I, i'm 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 uh i'm a speak into existence type person mm -hmm. uh and so anytime i have an opportunity to be able to state what, what i'm working on and why and what my goal is i i i try to express it and i try to tell others too talk about what you want to do talk about where you're trying to go and uh and what you're trying to accomplish i think a lot of times and I, I think I think this is the thing too that comes back to black men as well. A lot of times we are looked at as maybe you know too overconfident, uh, maybe self-absorbed, uh, you know Arrogant. The, that we have the capability of being able to do everything. And so mm -hmm. a lot of times when we talk to people, uh, especially people outside of our circles, maybe people that don't know us, we in a way kind of hold back because we don't want to come off as too much or too empowering or you know or, or too self-confident mm -hmm. um and so uh, so a lot of times we we don't voice what we're trying to accomplish and the things that we're trying to go after and i'm i'm big on stating and putting that out into the world one because i've got i've experienced so many unique opportunities where i've met people that i didn't expect to help catapult me in any type of direction uh, that I've actually assisted in a lot of things that I'm able to do now because I just talked about what I was doing and I was open and I was honest and I just voiced what I was going after. Uh, and I try to tell that, especially to our youth, uh, because a lot of times our youth, they'll, they'll keep things to themselves. They don't really they don't want to talk about things that they care about or they're passionate about. Uh, but once you start really expressing your passion, you're putting that into the world. I'm a firm believer. You start to now gravitate like-minded people and like-minded things around you when you speak about what you're working on and what you care about. And when you bring that passion to the table, you now, you, you know, it's, 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 it's magnetic in a way. You start to now pull people that have those similar goals, similar experiences, or people that can potentially help you. You now start to find those people in day-to-day -day things that you do. And so- when it comes to expectations and everything for me, I, I voice what I want to go after. Uh, I, I state that in every time I talk about the work that I do with my hip hop science platform is what my one of my main goals when I started this was to develop a show and to be able to bring representation to the masses. And I feel one of the best ways to do that is to truly bring entertainment and science to the forefront. And what is one thing that we all absorb and watch every day unanimously, regardless of it? You either have a Netflix account or Hulu account or you're watching something on YouTube or streaming. You know, you, you know your celebrities, you know your actors, you know your musicians, all these different things. For me, being able to now bring this to the forefront in the framework of a show that can reach millions of people across the globe. To me, that's the that's the epitome of all the work that I that I hope to accomplish and the people that I hope to reach and the type of impact that I hope to make. And so that's always been my expectation. And uh and I and I hope uh, excuse me, and I hope others, you know, realize the true capabilities that they have and and find ways to voice more and more what they truly want and and, and really have those expectations set. Good. It's good. You need to know what you want and you get, and I think saying it kind of put not pressure, but it moves, it, it motivates you more. Cause if I tell the world that I want to do this, mm -hmm. I've kind of have to. Yeah. I'm, you know, this is it. I'm going to have this show. I, you're not just saying that into a vacuum. There's people around you who hear this. Oh, he said, it, Oh, in 2000 and such and such, he said he was going to have a show. It's five years later. I ain't seen anything. So mm -hmm. it's this, what are you doing? You know, I guess, you know, you got to talk the talk to walk mm -hmm. the walk and and i applaud that all of this is great for whomever is watching you particularly the youth even more in particularly black young men who i think need to know and you mentioned it there's nothing wrong with wanting to be the best basketball player football player mm -hmm. best rapper best singer all that but there's really this idea there's this kind of unspoken idea that those are the only ways we can get out of wherever we may be those are the only things we can succeed at. And people like you can show us that I, you know, 
you're an entertainer, but you're not a rapper, but you're an intelligent one doing academic things. And I think when people see what you do, I can do that too. And I don't have to be singing or rapping or dancing or whatever to yeah. succeed. Mm -hmm. So you're wonderful. Absolutely. It's, Ed it's Education funny. is transformative. Yeah. And, and like I said, there's no, there's nothing wrong with wanting to be an athlete. I grew up, I was, I did track and soccer. Those are my two sports, you know, and, and uh, I, I ran long distance and I played soccer. I was, I was never tall enough for basketball or big enough for football, <laughs> but I, but I enjoy those sports on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, and, and I, you could have those, the love for those things. But I think a lot of times you're right. We, uh, and it definitely comes from, you know, situations, you know, like you, you I, I work with a lot of underrepresented youth, you know, that come from, you know, low income families, no, you know, opportunities not available for them. And so a lot of times those careers seem like the only way out. It's like, I got to be skilled at this so that I can be able to make millions of dollars and get myself out of this situation that my, me and my family are in. And, and, and yes, those are commendable for sure. Those are commendable goals to be able to pursue. But I think often the education side is overlooked because it's not as glamorized. You don't see educators on TV, you know, making millions of dollars and, and being in the spotlight and walking red carpets and driving fancy cars and all these things. So you don't, you, it's not something that you reach for because it's not glamorized in kind of general pop culture. But, you know, the, the, making that goal of, oh, I'm going to become the next LeBron. I'm going to focus on this skill of becoming a, an amazing hooper. You can do the exact same thing and focus on, hey, I'm going to become a, an aerospace engineer and I'm going to dive into these books and I'm going to, you know, work my way uh, uh, through these, the, this knowledge path that I need in order to be able to get this degree to be able to now work for Blue Origin or, you know, whatever, you know, SpaceX or any other of the, of the hundreds of different aerospace companies that are out there. And now be able to get to a point where I could be making hundreds of thousands of dollars and be able to transform and reshape my family's future. Still, you can still do a lot of those things. Uh, and that that pathway isn't glamorized and that pathway isn't even really talked about, you know, in, in, in you know, culturally as as much as it should. The really impact and the true things that you can be able to now gain from pursuing education. And so and that that could be just as general generational wealth changing as, you know, becoming a, a, an athlete or a pop star or celebrity. So uh, I think the more and more we try to bring that to the forefront, the more people see that, especially our youth and can now really find ways to be able to pursue it. I just had a vision of like scientists coming out to the red carpet when they go to an award show and, you know, groupies and like fools and oh my God, there's that physicist, such and such. I think they'll be hilarious. I think it'll be great, but, but maybe that's there's not a, right. There's a, there's a funny sketch. There's a funny sketch video. Uh, it's like this, this guy is like these bunch of white dudes are at this like party and, uh, and, and, uh, this guy has his like NASA badge on and the girls are like, Oh, you work for NASA. And then he goes through this whole thing where he's like bragging about, he like, but he didn't work for NASA. Right. He just had this, he just had this thing on and that like, and everybody was like, all these girls were just flocking over him. And I, that was his thing. Now, everywhere he'd go, he'd be like, he wears some NASA thing. Yeah. I work in NASA. But, and it was just kind of, it was, it was, it was a funny flex. But like it really brought up some really interesting dynamics, right? Because you don't you don't see that you don't see right. scientists get celebrated. You know, if that was an athlete, for sure you'd see mm -hmm. groupies and all sorts of stuff. You know, clamming mm -hmm. around them. But you know, scientists scientists are doing some amazing things, doing some incredible research all across the world. And to be able to walk in a room and get recognized because of your scientific expertise and have people flocking all over you, like that would be that'd be hilarious. And uh, be and I, I think yeah, we there. I, that's what I try to do a lot with my content is like, I want to be able to have these scientists celebrated like that. I want to be able to showcase the cool side of science and why this work that they're doing is life changing and the impact that it's making and, uh, and, and all the amazing things that you can be able to do as a scientist and be able to now celebrate it pop culturally, like you would any other entertainer or musician. <laughs> uh, that'd be so, that would be great. I don't know. I don't know if that would happen, but I can keep hoping for that. We, it's the dream. We can still mm -hmm. hope for the best. The We're going to go back into the word prize. The last letter, based on the way I do it, is that I in the middle. And it doesn't represent a word. It represents the man I'm speaking to. So if we take away shackles to title. So when you aren't hip-hop MD, an engineer, a husband, a you know a content creator, scientists when you're not all of these things 
and it's just you at your core, dark room, just you by yourself. Who are you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's you know that, that I I feel that's interesting because in a way, in a way for me, I can't take away all those different things, right? Those and we, and we kind of hinted at it earlier. As far as you know, the work that I do now, I don't look at it as work because these are things that I'd be doing anyway, exploring, asking questions. I've always been a curiosity seeker from a young age. I'd be that, I was that kid, that hand up all the time. I got a question, I got a question. I got to, you know, I want to talk. I question every single thing um, because I just want to know more. I just want, I want to know. And that's, that's, that's always been me at the core um, and adventurous and trying new things and wondering what if and and being willing to fail at different things and not be scared to fail i think those the, those elements at the core are what make are what make me and what kind of define me in a lot of different ways and have given me the ability to be able to do the work that i do as a scientist as an entertainer as a content creator um and then even bringing that into you know my family life you know i just have a baby daughter She's about to turn, she's about to be six months this, this coming week. Oh, um, and you know, it's being a first time father and now having a baby girl, and, and you know, being able to show her, you know, the, the you know, my little cameo appearance on the children's show on Netflix and whatnot. Uh, being able to now be that representation that I try to talk about with my platform to others to now be able to be that for my daughter and looking forward to moments where I can take her out to the park and go on explorations and whatnot with her. Um, those things at the core are what make me and kind of define me. Um, and I don't think I'd be able to do any of the residual work that I do now as an entrepreneur, as a business person, as a scientist, without having those kind of core values of being passionate, of being curious, asking questions and, and being a, a risk taker. Uh, I think all of those elements are true to who I am. And they're not something that I have to seek or have to stretch myself out of my normal wheelhouse in order to be able to do. I think those things are intrinsically me. And I think those give me the confidence and also give me the ability to be resilient and the, and the ability to be purposeful and passionate about the things that I do because I am at I, I, I am that at the core. That's excellent. That is excellent. I ask people that question a lot because a lot of us are defined by what we do. Mm -hmm. But you are one of the few people that I've spoken to where who you are is what you do. So it's not an act. Mm -hmm. It's not a facade. This is not what I put out to the world. When you're at home, you may not be wearing the same outfit. There may not be a camera on you, but you that same dude. Mm -hmm. So, and when you can acknowledge that, that makes you so much better because you, I'm just me. Mm -hmm. I'm just acknowledge this is what I am. This is what I love. And I get to do what I love. And you have a special situation where you get to do what you love. It allows you to live the life that you want. It just, and you're exposing millions of people to something that we regularly wouldn't see. Mm -hmm. So you being you is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Thank you for answering the questions, the prize mantra. I have two questions that I usually end with. You answered one of them. So I'm going to end it with this. One of the big things for me with men is that we don't usually talk about our issues. And a lot of times because we don't have somebody to talk to or talk about with. So do you have a friend? So no family, not a spouse, significant other. We got to put those people aside. Do you have a friend right now who you could call 3 a.m.? I did something dumb. I don't even know why I did it. It was dumb. It was stupid who you'd feel comfortable enough, safe enough to just say what you did. And it would be a guy be like, that was dumb. Why you do that? Somebody who would listen to you would be, give you a nice little man jab that we do, but somebody you feel safe enough to drop your worries and know that it wouldn't leave that person. Do you have that kind of person in the world? I do. I do. Absolutely. And I, and I, I, for me, I think that's one of been, been one of the great blessings that I've had in my life is I have, I have a core group of friends, not even just one person. I have a core group of friends that I can really be able to fully divulge any type of information to at any time, anywhere that would sit and listen and also truly understand me and understand why I did that. And also to be, give me their honest truth 
and to be able to tell me, hey, you you messed up in this situation or no, this you're going to pull through and, and and critique me as well, too. Uh, I have a core group of friends that we that were in, in multiple different chats with that I talked to. I have a, a, a best friend that I grew up with as well uh, that I can always that knows me at the core and will always be truthful and honest and be able to check me if if I'm doing something ridiculously dumb or going a complete direction that's not me. Um, and I think those those core group of friends have definitely assisted me in doing the work that I do because now they, you know, I think everybody should have friends that obviously celebrate them. You obviously want people that can celebrate you, but anybody can celebrate you. But it's those people that can really be able to check you and be like, hey, this is what you, this is, the, you know, you are either putting on this facade or you're not doing this, you didn't do this for the right reasons and really understand the core. And I think I have a, good, a lot of uh, that small group of friends that do that for me and have helped me throughout my journey and doing the work that I do to be supportive, to be those uh, amazing uh, celebratory uh, people as well, but also be those people who can provide, you know, the backbone that I need and challenge me in different ways that other people externally couldn't. And so, yes, I absolutely have those core friends uh, that really helped me in that specific area. That's wonderful. We need more of that. We need that support, the kind of support that really only men don't, we don't have tribes like we used to. We In the past, we had kind of these groups of friends and I think we need to get back to that. So for work that you do, and it can be challenging and you talked about that earlier, it's good to have some men to be like, yeah, you're doing well or you're struggling, but it's okay. We need that to keep, you know, our mental health is incredibly important and having mm -hmm. friends who listen and respect and honor what we're going through makes life just a little bit easier. Yep. So I want to say thank you so much. So, mm -hmm. so much for talking with me. Where can my listeners, watchers find you, your content? Do you have anything that's going on? Self, tell us everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, if anybody wants to find out the work that I do, you can always go to my website, hiphopscienceshow.com. Uh, I have weekly vlogs that I list on there, different activities, bio information, uh, ways to contact me. So that's definitely the, the, the best source. Uh, but to be able to watch any of my creative content that I put out there. You can catch me on all social media platforms at Hip Hop Science Show. I'm on Instagram, TikTok, uh, Twitter, uh, Facebook, all that good stuff. Um, and like you mentioned, you know, I, I love to be able to create content that kids can watch, obviously, but uh, adults watch as well, too. So it's very, very across the board with the, the, the content that I produce. Um, and then uh, as far as like some upcoming things, uh, I do a lot of I do a lot of workshops. I, I have the pleasure of being able to go out to different elementary schools, high schools, colleges. I do a lot of work with educators as well too, doing keynote presentations, doing hands-on workshops. Uh, so if there are any listeners that are in education or affiliated with schools or different organizations that are looking for uh, you know more you know representation for students. Um, or try to find ways to be able to bring interesting, dynamic, scientific topics to the forefront in whatever organization or platform you're at, uh, reach out to me because I do everything on the full spectrum. Uh, and science is the area that I love and being able to make science fun and exciting is what I love to do. So uh, definitely feel free to reach out to me if that's an area of need for you. And um, I got some really cool exp explorations coming up. I'll be going to sea again uh, next month for a week on a big oceanography trip um and uh and they got some big uh presentations in the works and uh who knows maybe might have some updates before the year is over on on on, on a potential show opportunity so All right. i'll yeah. i'll be watching for that mm -hmm. i'll be so happy to see your brother on tv talking about mm -hmm. science it's a necessary spot thank mm -hmm. you again last question we got through all the science stuff how did you feel when cody didn't get it done at wrestlemania where were you oh. on that? <laughs> see, I, see, people are like I'm not a I'm not a Cody Rhodes fan. I'm just not. I don't. I'm not. I, like, I actually I prefer. You know the Cody Rhodes. I, I I prefer dashing Cody Rhodes. That's Cody Rhodes that I preferred. I don't prefer. I don't like this Cody Rhodes where like I went to AEW and I did my thing and now uh, now I'm uh, now I'm spearheading this new thing. Like I don't know. I so I I was not mad that he lost. I was surprised that he lost because everything was everything was shaping up to be mm -hmm. him as a new champion. And I was 
a li- and I was actually quite honest. I was a little frustrated. I was like, oh, God, here we go. We're going to have Cody Rose champion. They're going to milk him down and force him down our throats and have everybody love. They made him too much of a baby face. So I think they're doing the right thing now. They didn't get it. They didn't give him the belt. They got him feuding now with Brock Lesnar. They're going to kind of build him up a little bit. Give him some more, you know, wins and stuff under his belt so that by the time he's back into that championship race again, now it's going to be a little bit more accepting. Um, and so I think they're doing the right thing. And the fact that they're splitting up the belts, I think that was important as well, too, because we need we need multiple title holders. I like Cody. I'm I'm, I'm more of I'm a fan of his father. I'm a, I'm older than you. I'm one of them old school wrestling fans. I love Dusty. Mm-hmm. I loved NWA. I loved all that stuff. I can see he's overtly babyface. He's like John Cena times 10. Like, yeah. it's just extra. Mm-hmm. So I was surprised he lost. So mm-hmm. Slightly surprised. But WWE purposely likes to mess with us. Yeah. This is what's going to happen. This is going to, oh, no, it's not. You know, they like to throw stuff our way. But mm-hmm. but I can talk wrestling all day. So I will let you go with that. Thank you <laughs> for talking. All your information, where you can find him, will be in the episode notes. It's been a pleasure. We didn't talk about or talk about the videos in particular that you do for the kids. Go to his social media and watch his stuff. If you have kids, watch. If you're into science and you don't have kids, watch. He's for everyone. And most importantly, he looks like us. (laughs) That's the most important thing to everybody who's listened and watched. Thanks for giving me of your time. I appreciate it. Thank you, sir. And never forget, men, ever forget that you are the man and you are the prize. I'll see you next week. (laughs) 